Psalms 27. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty, the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple, the temple of the Lord, to behold the beauty, the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple, the temple of the Lord. Sing with me. One thing have I desired of the Lord that I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty, the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple, the temple of the Lord. To behold the beauty, the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple, the temple of the Lord. Welcome, welcome to New Life in Christ Christian Center broadcast. My name is Gerald Walton. I'm the pastor and elder of New Life in Christ Christian Center. We welcome you today on our broadcast. We come to be a blessing by lifting up the name of Jesus and blessing his holy name. Well, you're in for a blessing today. Nothing but good news of the gospel of the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. So that is our purpose, why we're on the broadcast, to spread the good news of the gospel. Amen. Well, thank you for being with us today, or if you're just turning in or checking in, welcome. We, we wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Well, I have, um, when we have our broadcast, I like to exhort people in the will of God, his will and his way. Amen. And Hebrews 12, chapter 12, verse 28 through 29, it says, Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Amen. Amen. Well, before I start, uh, New Life in Christ Christian Center, I just share a little bit about our local fellowship. We believe in the celebration of the new life of Jesus Christ and also growing up and becoming more like Christ. And that means understanding what he came to do. He came to give the love of the Father, spread the message of eternal life, which is referred to as the kingdom of our God. Amen. So uh, New Life in Christ Christian Center, we, uh, we celebrate new life in Christ. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold. All things have become new. Amen. So before we get started on our message today, uh, I'm a messenger. I bring the good news. I used to be a paper boy when I was 9 and 10 and 11 years old. And uh, when you was a paper boy, you brought the news to the residents. Amen. Well, I'm, a, I'm bringing good news to the nations, nations of people, all kindreds. Amen. So I'm bringing the good news today of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. So I want to pray this prayer over your life. I'm going to read this prayer. And I'm uh, continually maintaining prayer for you. Uh, this is the prayer that I have for all the viewers today. It's in Colossians chapter 1, 
verse 9 through 14. I'm going to read it and believe God it be imparted to you and your family and loved ones. Or for someone who's just first time turning in or tuning in. Okay, it says, uh, 1 Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, it says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. I do not cease to pray for you. And do desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of God's will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power. Amen. According to his glorious power. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Isn't that a blessing? And that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Amen. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us to be meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Thank the Lord. Amen. For Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, today's message uh, today has to do with the gospel, the good news. And uh, what's been really stirring my heart for quite some time is uh, the message where God wants to get across. Uh, and that message today I want to share with you is that tell them I love them. Tell them. Tell who? The nations. Amen. Tell the believer and the unbeliever that God loves them. So I'm going to share that with you today. And uh, before I really get into the message, I want everybody to realize that God is love. God is love. Amen. And in John 3.16, he shares his love for the nations of people. He says, for, uh, in the word, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that God sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world, the nations of people, but that the world through him might be saved. And therefore God so loved us that he gave his son to die for our sins that we may have everlasting life for the wages of sin the bible says the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life and i don't know if you've been counting how many years you've lived and how many more years you would like to live but eternity has to do with eternity and our life is temporal here and that's why God wants to tell people he loves them and wants them to have everlasting life. God wants to uh, make things right, and he will make things right. And because of the transgressions of Adam and Eve, sin entered into the world. And therefore, he sent a man named Jesus, his son, his only begotten son, referred as the second Adam, to reconcile us back to the Father. And that is called redemption. Christ re came to redeem us. Amen. So God loves you with that special act of giving his son so that we can have eternal life and be forever with the Lord. Amen. So in heaven, there's nothing but love. And now we're going to talk a little bit about that. But in John 4, 19, it says we love him because he first loved us. Let's go there. 
John, 1 John, that is, chapter 4. 1 John, chapter 4, which is right before Revelations. If you have your Bible, come along with me. And in 1 John, chapter 4, verse 19, it says, Hereby we know that we dwell in him and he in us, because he has given us his spirit. Amen. And we have seen and do testify, verse 14, that was 13, the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Amen. So Christ was sent to be the Savior of the world, save us from sins, because sin uh, has death to it. It's eternal separation from God. And in heaven, sin it does not dwell there. And I know you're familiar, maybe you're not, with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So the kingdom of God is forever. Amen. And therefore, God sent his son, Jesus, to save us from our sins. And when Jesus walked the earth, he was explaining, teaching, and preaching the kingdom of God. Amen. And the kingdom of God is God's theocracy. It is God's government where he reigns as king. Amen. So it is God demonstrating and sharing and telling things that pertain to eternity, which is his kingdom. And so all God's children need to understand and come under the reign and the influence of Jesus Christ, who is the king of the kingdom. Amen. So God so loved us, he gave his son, Jesus to die for all our sins, all of them, and that he died once, amen, Jesus, and did it all. And he said his last words, Father, the work is finished. So now when we believe that Jesus died for our sins, we're to live unto righteousness. We're to live to the glory of God. We're to walk in the light because he is in the light. Amen. And that's the liberty and the blessing that we have. Amen. So if we go to Romans uh, chapter 5, verse 8, we can understand it even more. Romans, Romans chapter 5, verse 8 through 11. Let's read it. It says here, but God commended his love to us word. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him, the wrath of God, for the children of disobedience and for sinners and workers of iniquity, which is workers of sin, evil. And it goes on and says, verse 10, for if we... For if when we, excuse me, were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Whose life? Jesus. We shall be saved by his life. And then it goes and says, and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement, amen, amen, the reconciliation, Christ, Christ reconciling us to the Father, amen. So in Ephesians 2 and 8, it says, for by grace are you saved through faith, it's the gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. So that grace, he saved us, amen. And because of our faith in him, amen, it says that grace are you saved through faith. It's the gift of God, the gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. So works don't save you. If you feed the poor, 
if you if you don't if you've done all good things down here, that doesn't save you. It's grace that saved us through faith, our faith in Him. Amen. So we receive the gift or the grace of God through Jesus Christ. It's a gift. You don't work for it. You don't earn it. You receive it and you believe it. And when you receive and believe, you walk in the newness of him. That's the beauty of it. Relationship. Relationship. Relationship is God's will for us to know him, be in covenant with him, and walk in his ways and walk in his love. Amen. So that's why he wanted me to tell you that he loves you. And he wants you to walk in his love. He wants you to be his children in the earth. Amen. So his free gift of grace saved us. And it's through our faith in his son, really, is how we're saved. For by grace are you saved through faith. It's the gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. But our faith in Christ and the redemptive work he did on the cross saves us. Amen. So God sent Jesus to show us his love in the earth. Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father when he walked the earth. Amen. But it was through our faith to believe in Christ that Jesus becomes the truth in our heart. So it's by faith that we believe in the truth, for the truth is in Jesus. Amen. So we go to John 14, the gospel of John 14. We'll read and understand a little bit more about truth. John 14, 6 says, Jesus said unto him, and he's referring to uh, Thomas, and he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. By me. So Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by Jesus. It has to do with redemption. It has to do with reconciling, restoring that which was lost, bringing his creation, his, his creation of people and nations back in fellowship and relationship with him. That's why Jesus was sent, to restore that which was lost. Amen. And to bring those who need a Savior and who need the Father and know the Father, that they may know the Father and that they may come back to their heavenly father. Amen. What a blessing. I tell you, this is the good news. And if we go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, we'll read a little bit more of how Jesus is God's love to us, his only begotten son. The passage of Scripture says, Hear ye my son, in whom I am well pleased. So uh, God appeared and spoke in, in different times, in dispensations of time, over and over telling people that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Hear ye him, my beloved son. He's saying that right now in the scriptures. Hear ye him, my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. I sent him for you. I sent him to be your savior, God sent him to be our Lord, Savior, Redeemer, King. Hallelujah. There's royalty with this too. But here, uh, as I said, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21, we'll read. And it says here, If so be that ye have heard him, and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. So the truth is in Jesus. 
when he was here, he was teaching the kingdom of God. He was teaching things that pertain to eternity. He knew about the world and what the world had to offer called kingdoms of this world. But his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And the good news is his kingdom cannot be shaken. But other kingdoms shall be shaken. And under other kingdoms shall vanish away. But his is an eternal kingdom. And it's for you. It's the gift of God. It is the Father's good pleasure, the Bible says, to give you the kingdom. Oh, that's a blessing. Now, what is the kingdom? Mentioned in the Bible is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. It's in the spirit. Now, I'm not talking about the literal kingdom, but the spiritual kingdom is in the spirit, and it belongs in your heart because Jesus came to present it to you so that it could enter and be in your heart and so that you can be influenced by Jesus and his teachings because his teachings are principles, way of life, way of living. Amen. So you want to take his yoke, and learn of him. Hallelujah. You desire that. I know you do. And if you don't desire it, that's your answer. That answer is in Jesus. And that is God's way of telling you he loves you. He sent his son to die for you. He sent his son to speak for him. He sent his son to show you him to show you the Father. So when you read the revelation of Jesus, you're going to get the revelation of the Father. May God bless you with that. Because that's the truth. And the truth is in Jesus. Amen. So God gives you faith to be saved. And faith is believing. Believing God at his word. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But faith means believing God at his word. It means trusting, trusting God at his word. And his word is Jesus. His word is in the word. Amen. And that's why you want to treasure his word and put it in your heart and renew your mind. Because heaven and earth is going to pass away. But his words will live and abide forever. Amen. So God tells us to guard our heart. Guard our heart against what? Lies, deceits, counterfeits, false, false things, twisted things. Amen. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. So that's relationship. You, you, all of us must know Jesus. And the way we know Jesus is to follow him and learn of him. That's the truth of God's love. He wants us to learn from his son because his son was here to tell us about the father. <coughs> Excuse me. Amen. So faith is believing God's word and his word is in his son. So if you want God's word in you, it's in his son. It's in his teachings and his principles and his way of life and way of thinking. Amen. So you believe with your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And that's in Romans 10, chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Believing also has to do with confessing and believing. They are dependent on each other. You can't confess, but you don't believe in your heart. And you can't uh, believe if you don't confess what's in your heart. So in Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart and believe in thy heart that Jesus saved you, then thou shalt be saved. That God saved you through his Son. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and, the, and with confession uh, salvation is made possible. The gift of God. Whosoever believeth on the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 13. Saved from what? From sin. Because the wages of sin is death. 
and death leads to eternal separation from God, who is love. So the kingdom of God is based on the love of God, the truth of God, the righteousness of God, the justice of God. Amen. And God even commands us to do everything in love. In charity, do all things in charity and to walk in his love. So how do you walk in his love? You receive his love. And then you pour out the same love that was poured out to you, into you, into your heart, into your life. Then you pour out to others. Amen. So that's our uh, first. I'm going to do a series of uh, the love or agape love which is the God kind of love. So I thought I would start out by sharing the good news that, that God told me to tell you he loves you. He loves you so much he gave his son. He loves you so much that he would not want you to perish but have eternal life. And we're to receive that love, which is the same as to receive the gift and then walk in that love. How do you know you have that gift in you? You walking in his spirit. Amen. And, and God's love is, is referred to as agape, the God kind of love. So the next time we meet, we'll talk about agape, the God kind of love. I hope this was a blessing to you. Until we meet again, God bless you, shine his face upon you, and give you peace. In Jesus' name.